on the morning of Tuesday the 16th of August 1938. RAF Catrick Airfield hummed with the usual activity of a busy military base. Among the aircraft on the tarmac was a Miles Magister, a light training aircraft operated by 2-6 Army Cooperation Squadron. L-8060 was built to contract by Phillips and Powis Limited at Woodley and had been taken on charge by 2-6 Squadron at Catrick on the 21st of March 1938. Lieutenant Edward James Boyle was a promising young officer of the King's Own Scottish Borders Regiment. He had already served seven years in the military by the age of 26, the son of Captain the Honourable James Boyle, who died in the First World War, Edward was following a path of honour and service. Recently seconded to the Royal Air Force, that move to the Royal Air Force was an odd one for a professional soldier, until he realised his stepfather was Viscount Trenchard, known as the father of the RAF. Dr William Delano Walker was no ordinary medical officer, a man of many talents and interests, he was a scientist, an explorer and a newly qualified pilot. Born in Adelaide in Australia, he had dedicated his life to the pursuit of knowledge, studying indigenous cultures and earning numerous accolades in his field for photography and his detailed logging of his adventures. Lieutenant Boyle and Dr William Walker finished their briefing for the morning and headed out to the Miles Magister that was waiting on the runway. Lieutenant Boyle was to be the pilot of this aircraft and Dr Walker was the passenger. But the purpose for the flight for that day remains a mystery. It might have been a routine training exercise or perhaps a more casual flight given the presence of Dr Walker who was not a normal member of the crew. What is known is that the two men took off from Catrick Airfield around 11.35 in the morning. The skies were clear and the wind was calm and it was seemingly a perfect day for flying. As the Magister climbed into the air, it headed northwest towards the village of Skeby. The aircraft was last seen around midday, flying low over the rural landscape. Observers on the ground at Skeby noticed something unusual. The aircraft's engine was spluttering struggling to maintain its power. Suddenly, the engine cut out entirely and the aircraft began to lose height rapidly. The villagers watched with bated breath as the engine miraculously roared back to life, allowing the aircraft to level out. But the relief was short-lived. The engine failed again and this time the Magister went into a fatal spin, plummeting towards the ground from a height of about 500 feet. With a sickening crash, the aircraft dived into a field of standing corn near Oliver Farm, in a spot known locally as Scorbury Field. The wreckage was discovered almost immediately, but there was nothing anyone could do. Both Lieutenant Boyle and Dr Walker had perished in the crash. The news of the accident spread quickly, and an inquest was convened soon after to determine the cause. The commanding officer at Catrick gave evidence, suggesting that after the engine failed for the second time, Lieutenant Boyle had likely applied full flaps in an attempt to slow the aircraft down. This manoeuvre, whilst well-intentioned, would have caused the aircraft to stall. With only 500 feet of altitude, there simply wasn't enough time or space for Lieutenant Boyle to recover from the stall before the aircraft hit the ground. The Magister was a relatively new aircraft, as I mentioned earlier, had only been delivered to 2-6 Squadron in March of 1938. It had only clocked up 82 hours of flying time before this crash. The aircraft was deemed a total loss and it was struck off charge on the 13th of November 1938. Lieutenant Boyle was laid to rest in the Earl of Glasgow's private burial ground in Largs, Scotland a quiet and sombre ceremony befitting his status. The burial location of Dr Walker, on the other hand, remains a mystery. Nobody to date has been able to find out where he's laid to rest 